Hi, boys and girls. My name is Charlie Kenzel, and I am a member of the board here at the Saratoga Springs History Museum. Today, we're uh, under the quarantine of uh, COVID-9 virus, so we're unable to meet. Normally, in the month of June, all the kids, all of you from Caroline Street or Division Street, Lake, uh, Greenfield, or Geyser Road, or Dorothy Nolan, you'd all be with us, and we'd be spending a good portion of the day and having lunch here in Congress Park. But instead, what we've tried to do is put together for you a video that would give you some of the history of Saratoga Springs to help you as you're finishing your fourth grade year. First of all, let's start and think about the great city we live in. Saratoga Springs uh, starts right away with the idea, springs mean water, and that's what we're all about. We're not about horse racing. We're not all about casino gambling. We're about water. The city of Saratoga Springs was one of the first and most prominent health resorts in the United States in the 1800s. More people came to Saratoga Springs in the summers in the 1800s than went any other place in the United States. We were the number one tourist destination in the US. And why did they come initially? For the waters, the healing waters that bubbled out of the ground. And to a large extent, the most famous of those springs was the Congress. As you look at the Congress right now, you'll notice that it still runs today in 2020, and it was initially discovered in 1792. And that was a long time ago. So let's think about 1792 for just a minute. Back then, there was nobody living here. There was only one structure, and it was down near where the farmer's market is today, at the area below the part of what we call today the old Bryan Inn. And it was a log cabin. It wasn't a house. It was just a log cabin. And the first permanent settler to Saratoga Springs, Alexander Bryan, was operating a boarding house there. And he would serve dinners and things, but people could sleep there. And a group of patriots, I'll say, I'll say in 1792, that had fought in the uh, American Revolution, came to Saratoga Springs and they walked through what would have been just wild pine forests between there and here. And one of them, Nicholas Gilman, in the early morning came and was hunting in this area and all of a sudden he discovered water bubbling out of the ground naturally. He put his hand down and scooped the water up and when he did he realized it was carbonated and it was mineralized. And he was, I think I found another spring. So when he brought everybody back and sat and said, Yes, you have discovered another spring. Nicholas Gilman, what will you call it? He decided since he had been a member of the first Continental Congress uh, at the beginning of the American Revolution, that as a, a real honor to the country, he would name this the Congress Spring. As a result, this became such a huge, well-liked spring in the United States. The waters were bottled and shipped all over the United States, even as far away as China. And it was a water that people liked the taste of. And as a result, the area that grew up around the Congress Spring became known as Congress Spring Park. By the time we get to about 1920, they dropped the Spring Park. And today, you've probably heard people talk about Congress Park but it still all is named from this single spring. This was, and still is today, the real lifeblood and heart and soul of the city. Uh, people came here in the early mornings in the 1800s out of the big hotels that were on Broadway. They came down fully dressed in their best clothing and they stood in line to have a few drinks of water every single day. It was believed that you should start your day with mineral water to make you more healthy. Um, therefore, how'd the hotels come in? Men um, that came in who we think of as the father of Saratoga, um, Gideon Putnam and his wife Dewanda were the first ones to build a hotel in Saratoga. And it was called Putnam's Tavern and Boarding House, which was almost directly across from Congress Park. So together, the building of the hotels, the use of the springs, all of that led to many, many, many thousands and thousands of people coming to Saratoga Springs. And when they came, they eventually wanted other things to do. And as a result, our friend John Morrissey brought in uh, horse racing in 1863. 
and by 1870 he had built a casino that today we call the Canfield Casino. So when you think about Saratoga Springs and this wonderful place that we live in, it all started with water. And the last thing that I'd like you to know, uh, at least in this introduction, is that Saratoga has a name that is itself very, very unique. It is a Mohawk term that was originally Saragataga. And Taga means place of, and Saraka means great salt springs. So in the early part of the 1700s, the Native American tribe near here, the Mohawk, would visit us every summer. They would drink the waters at the High Rock, and they were the first ones to introduce settlers, starting with Sir William Johnson in 1771, to the water here at Saratoga. After he had tasted it and felt that it made him feel better, he was then badgered by his friends to please tell us where this secret spring is. And once he divulged the location, more and more settlers came in. And finally, a deal was brokered with the Mohawk that allowed the settlement of Saratoga Springs. So key items where we were late to be founded because the Mohawk protected the area. Our name is a Mohawk term. And then it was all about water at the beginning. Saratoga Springs is truly a fitting name for our city. Buddy, this is another good spot for you as you're walking around the park to visit. This is called the Morrissey Fountain. Now, John Morrissey, who was um, really the founder of not only the racetrack here in Saratoga Springs, but also the Canfield Casino. He built the casino in 1870. He included a lot of uh, outside facilities that helped to enhance or make it look better. And uh, this Morrissey Fountain has, has a lot of history, and it's been around obviously since 1870, but it is one of those things that has a lot of uh, folklore with it too. So here's the folklore that goes with the Morrissey Fountain. It's always been told here in Saratoga Springs that atop this fountain, a red ball would be placed when there was illegal gambling taking place inside the casino. And that as the red ball spun, forced up there by the pressure of the water, that it gave the indication to people coming by that it was okay to come in. They were open for business. They were starting to gamble for the day. Now we kind of thought about that here at the History Museum for a lot of years. Finally came up with the idea of how could that possibly be. And recently we just got a photo, an original photo of this fountain. And what we found was way up on top, there was a basket. It was a metal, a wire metal basket that allowed a ball to be placed in there and it would spin without falling out. Just another one of the ideas of some of the fun things here in Congress Park. Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the Saratoga History Museum. I'm Tom Burns and I'm a volunteer here and unfortunately we can't be opened at this time so we're all looking forward to you all coming back and seeing these things that we're going to show you today in person. This is the uh, Canfield Casino. It was named after the last person who, na who uh, owned it, uh, a man named Richard A. Canfield. This was built in 1870. And so for those people who are really good at math, you can figure out how old this building is today. And maybe I'll tell you at the end. Another interesting feature of just the entranceway are these dogs, one here and one there. These are just um, uh, models of the real dogs that were, that were uh, commissioned by the, um, uh, the, the proprietor of the building, uh, who is John Morrissey. And the original pewter ones are upstairs on the third floor. So hopefully you'll get back and see those. We're on the side of the uh, casino at this time, and the casino was built over many years. If you look at the bricks, each building can tell us a story, and by looking at the bricks, the bricks will tell us kind of how old this building is. Now remember the front was 1870, and how many years was that? Well, we're celebrating our 150th anniversary this year. This building uh, to the left was um, built in 1872. Notice the brick. Now let's look at the, the side uh, that in the back here. They built a beautiful dining room, which we'll show you later. But those bricks are, are more red or more new. That was built in 1902. So this was 1872. And then 30 years later, 1902, they built the dining room.
What we're looking at right now is a pond. And this pond contained trout. Trout was the, um, the delicacy of the day. You would come down in your horse and carriage from the, from the Saratoga horse track, and you would stop here, and a man would be here with a big net, and you would pick out your fish, he would net the fish, and they would bring it into the kitchen through the back door. You're looking at the statues of Spit and Spat. This is our famous fountain in Congress Park. And which one is spit and which one is spat is the question of the day. Well, let's take a look at them. If you look at the one on the left, he's a little bit younger looking. He's less muscular. The one on the right is a little hairier and, and more muscular. And so we think spit is the present tense. So therefore, the one on the left is spit. And spat is the past tense, or an older person, and that's spat. And spit and spat, spit and spat at each other all day long for the entire summer. We're here in the Italian gardens. These gardens were built in 1903 by Richard Canfield because of his love of Roman and Greek statue, statues and art. And each statue tells a separate story. The statue in the middle is a sundial, and that isn't that interesting. And we'll tell you how to read the time when you get here. This is the Italian gardens, and um, th this has an awful lot of history because this came in a little bit later. It was the brainchild of um, Richard Canfield in about 1903. And between the renovation on the Canfield Casino, where he put on the dining room, plus this area, it cost him almost a million dollars in buying power in 1900. Therefore, today it probably would cost, between these two projects, almost 12 million. And why did he come up with the idea for this, or how did he do that? Believe it or not, he was very good friends with the president of Harvard College. And he sat and talked to the president on occasions and said, how can I add to my gambling facility so that people can come and relax if they're not gambling? What, what, what am I missing? And the president of Harvard suggested that there be a picturesque garden area laid out and open to people that came to uh, gamble. And that was a good time for them to get away, walk away from the tables, be outside. So this was all the brainchild of a conversation that started between Richard Canfield and the president of Harvard College. Now, the other thing to remember is back in the early 1900s, this area was a lot quieter. We didn't have uh, automobile traffic, and we had a lot of high hedges that were planted so as to suppress the noise. So it must have been a very beautiful, quiet, and picturesque place to visit. This statue was uh, originally out in the middle of Broadway. And unfortunately, after a few cars kept hitting it, we decided to move it in here to the park. It's in honor of all the men and women who served in the Civil War from Saratoga. And it's in honor of the 77th New York State Volunteers. Now, where did they get the name 77th? Well. That's a good question because there was, it was not 77 regiments. And the reason that we wanted that number, 77, is because in 1777, that was the Battle of Saratoga during the American Revolution. Beautiful places in Congress Park is the site that we're at right now, which is the Spirit of Life statue. Actually, this entire section, including the, the water feature and the statue, is all part of a huge memorial to a gentleman that lived in a big mansion a few miles from here named Spencer Trask. The Trask family owned Yaddo, so maybe some of you have heard of the Yaddo Estate which is a short distance from here, but he passed away on December 31st, 1908, in a train accident on his way to New York City. And his wife, Katrina, wanted to find a way to memorialize, to celebrate his life and his time in Saratoga. So she went out and brought the, one of the best sculptors in the United States at the time, Daniel Chester French, to do the sculpturing of the 
of a beautiful figure that's here. Now, the idea by French was to produce a figure that would have two things um, very visible. One is a cup, which if you get close enough to the to view the cup, you'll notice the cup in her right in her left hand has water coming out, which is to symbolize the importance of the mineral water in the history of Saratoga Springs. And in the raised right hand is a piece of foliage, something that was living. And the idea was this would celebrate his life, but it would celebrate the spirit of life in Saratoga, the living part and the water part. Now, in order for French to finish this, he decided to use another friend of his that had helped him on other project, and his name was Bacon. So Bacon designed all the water feature. The next time you're here, take a look at this beautiful memorial, and then remember the back of an old penny. You have the Lincoln Memorial. The statue of Lincoln in the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. was also done by Daniel Chester French. And when he was working on that in Washington, D.C., he went ahead and brought his old friend, Mr. Bacon, into, into view. And that's why the reflecting pools, the long stretch of water in front of the Lincoln Memorial is in Washington, D.C. today therefore making a very strong point between Saratoga and some of the best in the world at the time.